day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Bless you. Man, you know what? We are moving uh, to 2022 to, to start establishing the truth. You know what I mean? To, to, to start educating people concerning the word of God. You know what I mean? And you know, I put down here, if you look at it, uh, I like Nehemiah 8, verse 8. It says, so they read the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading, huh? And that's what we want to be able to do. That's what we want the ministry to do, is to make sense and understanding of God's word. I mean, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. It's true. But there are some layers and layers of, of revelation, but what I want to do is encourage people at least get the revelation of the basic understanding of God's word. And to understand is that even if you get some layers, well, you know, deeper, because that's people that get deep. The, the point is this, it has to stay still with the foundation of the basics. Because it goes outside the basic, then something's wrong. You know what I mean? It, it, it just, it has to stay within the, 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 the basic foundation of the scriptures. Uh, if not, you can get into the God. Err, you err. That Jesus said it sometimes. You, you you erred in the scriptures, you know, because you're not. You you, you see those those scriptures Nehemiah is to be distinct, you know. Read it distinctly, and give understanding of God's word. So as we move into, as we are, excuse me, in 2022, let's we want to have a series of Bible studies where we just being very distinct and understanding in the reading of God's word. And, and, and so that we can start recognizing we don't we don't live with being an actor. And that's what we talk about. That's why I call it religious people. And 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 that's sometimes what people are really trying to push people to be more of a of an act. Instead of just being who you are and saying, hey God is working with me. Right? I'm not, I'm not where I, I want to be. But thank God I'm not where I used to be. See, that's that's the key of being a Christian, is to recognize that I'm, I'm, I'm moving from glory to glory to glory. And one of the things is that part of that as we do grow is to make sure that we start recognizing some of the deceit of people who call themselves men or women of God, but mostly I'm talking about in the historical context. A lot of cases we've been lied to by men in the gospel. We already know what the issues were for the Old Testament, right? We we saw it. I mean, even even when Jesus showed up, they they couldn't receive him because far their concern is you 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 got to line up with us. You got to be go our way, uh, not not. God's way. You know, Jesus said a couple of times that your tradition has made the word of God a matter of fact. And that's what we can fall into. If, if, if the people try to get you off base and, and cause you to start doing some spooky stuff. And, and what I want to be able to talk about today is the title is, and let me show it to you. This is the title I put in there. They lied to the body of Christ that it was okay to hate. Now you might sit and say, wait, well, what are you trying to say? Well, see, I call it hate, or even the day the term we call hate crimes, is when people do bad things to people just for the mere fact that they disagree with them or based on the fact that they're color of skin, whether you're black or white, uh, or what, you're from a different nationality. There's people that do things 
and they think they're justified by the body of Christ. They lie and they tell you that they're doing the will of God. We already seen it in situations where uh, the people that that lack of 9 11, for example, uh, they, where these people took planes and, and flew them into the, to the Twin Towers. And they said they to they said they're doing it for the for the, for the will of God, you know. Or even the sixth January and then the, the the breaking into the building. You ask yourself, was that God? <laughs> you, did, did you do that <laughs> uh, for the, in the acting out of the will of God? So I know you went to all. The, I know you went to different churches and you you invited people from different churches and denominations. And, and you know, they're talking about the, the evangelicals, but they went to different churches and all this. Well, they were predominantly white churches, predominantly black churches. They went and they brought people to come to the capital. Now, some of those people didn't know that they were going to do what they were doing. They didn't know the people were going to them, uh, run into the building and, and break windows and doors and start hang, you know, hang the vice president. You don't want to hang the vice president of the United States. So kill some of the political uh, Democrats or whatever. But the point is that they got involved with something that was organized in the church. And, and based on the constitution that we all raise our hands for and say that we will support and defend, they actually tried to disrupt the constitutional process of transfer of power. They they did it. And then the thing about it is, and you saw it, most of us saw the video, these people were very upset about it. I mean they were upset. They they because what? They were upset because they believe that in a lie. I don't care what somebody's going to say, well, when you bring politics, because that's the point of it. That's the point. Because what caused those people to do something in the, uh, the uh, Spanish Inquisition? What caused people to sit there and kill six million Jews in, in World War II? What caused people to sit there and burn people at the stakes during the arena, during the oh, new, part of the new Christian time? And what about all the other atrocities, atrocities that occurred based on people saying they're doing it in the name of God? And you're gonna sit there and say, we're gonna ignore that. We're gonna sit there and say, we're gonna leave that alone because that's 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 that's, that's the world, that's the politics. That got to do with the kingdom of God. It has everything to do with the kingdom of God when you sit there and lie about the kingdom of God. When you sit there and tell people who believe in Christ, and I know they honestly, there's people who honestly believe in Jesus Christ, and they've been lied to by people who call themselves men, women of God. Or somebody to call themselves politicians that both are saying that they believe in the Jesus Christ, their Lord, and tell the body of Christ a lie, to operate in a lie, and do things according to a lie, to sit there and hurt some people. You're trying to ask yourself, how, what, what role did the church play during the, the slave trade? What role did they play? What part of Jesus Christ, what part of the gospel justified slavery? What part? What part, excuse me, what part justified from the gospel the, the hanging and the lynching and the mutilation of a person? What part of the gospel did you see that? Where did you see that? But where did, what the, the worst thing about it is, where did the people in the body of Christ, people who believe, go to church on Sundays, raise their hands, glorifying God, reading the scriptures and praying to God, where did they get the understanding that they're supposed to be able to hurt people and hate people? Where did the where did body of Christ, the body of Christ, go to uh, January 6th? Where did the body of Christ go? Up there. Why did members who call themselves Jesus Christians go up there? Or where, where, where is it to justify 
to operate on behind a lie when you know it's a lie. If you can't prove it, then you can't say it's true. Well, I, I, I got a question. No, that has nothing to do about what you question. Can you, can you prove it? And, and if, you meant, if you went to six courts, 60 courts here, to the Supreme Court, you conduct the audits, hand count audits, and you still come up with somebody else winning, and then you still accept somebody saying that is a lie. You tell me, I, I mean, remember, the world, I understand the world, but I'm trying to understand us as the believers. And that's why we got to sit there and say, Stop sitting there trying to say, well, I want to just, I just want you to focus on, 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 on about the kingdom of God. Well, you're in this world. You might not be of this world, but you're in this world. And if you're in this world, you are ambassadors for Christ. And if you're ambassador of Christ, then you're operating the lies, right? If you're ambassador of Christ, you, your parents shouldn't be, shouldn't have been doing the things they did and the atrocities they did for 400 years. In this country, they shouldn't have done the same thing that the Egyptians did to the to the children of Israel in the, uh, in Egypt, should they? They shouldn't have done what the children of Israel did when they started giving the children the sacrifice, putting them in the fire. And God said, I, "That never even came into my mind. Why would you do that?" So my point is. It is everything, if we're going to be in this world, we're going to be in the class of Christ, then we should not get involved with lies or hate. And, and apparently people believe that that's what we, you know, people, the world sees us. I don't, you know, maybe that's why you understand why some people don't want to be part of the body of Christ. Because they see the ugliness that we, now I can say we, I, you know, I had that, that, that conversation a couple of days ago where the brother was talking about, not the brother, but the lady in Fox News was talking about uh, black people, the most murderous people in the country. 41 million people are the most murderous, murderous people in the country based on 9,000 people, 9,000 murderers in 2020. Really? 41 million people. Divide that into, divide 9,041 million and see if you get a percentage point. But you're going to say most. Most always means over 50%. So 41 million people. You say, I'm sorry, I'm just using that as an example. Then if some of you have been taught all your life that, that people with a certain, people with melanin in the skin, a lot of melanin in the skin, were murderers and rapists, thieves and robbers. And every time something happened and that they did something in the, in the, in the, in the, and put it in the news, you will contribute to the whole group of people. And then some of us, are group, I would tell you, it's not, it's not, it's not just white people, it's just, there's some black people that sit there and get upset when, 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 when black people do something, they get upset and get offended. And think that they take responsibility as if they have they both have ownership of what that person did. The only connection, let me make sure everybody understands this. The only connection that a, a person of color has with me is the melanin skin. After it stops right there. What do you mean it stops right there? It stops right there because I don't control that person's behavior. That person doesn't control my behavior. That person doesn't control my state, my style of living. Just like I don't, they don't control, we don't control each other. Base, the, the, the melon is not the connection to me and a white person or a black person. There's, there's no connection for one white person to another white person. There's, there's only, the color skin is the only thing that connects. After that, it's, 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 it's stopped right there. It doesn't go any further because we, we don't have a meeting to, to tell us how we're all supposed to operate. You know, we don't have a meeting. Look at this. Hey, listen to this. See, we don't have a meeting to say we're supposed to steal. We don't have a meeting to say we're supposed to lie. We don't have, we don't have a meeting to, supposed to say we're supposed to rape and be 
murderers or whatever. We don't have meetings. And therefore, I know I can meet you. So, so you know this, this melon in the skin does not have any, any brain cells in it. Doesn't have any compulsions or make people do certain things or behave a certain way. You, you know that, right? You know that, don't you? But you've been taught over and over and over again, whether you're black or white, doesn't matter. You each have been taught that the, the color, the, the, the skin is a reflection of your character. And you know good and well that skin doesn't have a reflection of character. That skin doesn't, you, you understand where I'm coming from? It does not equal anything concerning behavior. The only connection that I have with, with my brother, my blood brother, is we came from the same mother. We were raised up in the same family. We had the same parents. That's a greater connection because we, we both grew up in the same household. But it doesn't, if he does something that's not equal me, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna do it. Because my, my, my brother my brother's a very talented man. You he's he 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 not went to school to be a mechanic, but he got guaranteed he could beat most mechanics out there. But I get, don't don't quit on my don't think I can do it. I don't have that ability. And yet we we're brothers, we have the same parents, and yet we're different people. So we're different people between a blood brother <laughs> that they, they each have different characters, different skills, different talents. Why would you think somebody who is not my brother, who is not my blood sister, have some type of connection beyond the melanin in my skin? Even for you. You got you you know like the, you 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 got you got you got white neighbors, you got black neighbors. But let's say what the fact is, just because there's whites that live in a city, all those white people don't think the same way, don't believe the same things, don't don't like the same things, and so the only the only thing is connect them to one another is just the melon or the lack of melon in their skin. <laughs> if, 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 if a white man sit there and kills somebody, I can't contribute to the all white people are killers. If a black man kills them, I can't contribute to all, the, that black man to all black people or brown people or whatever you want to call us today. <laughs> we come up all kinds of names, African-American uh, or black. But the, the, regardless of what you want to call us, the, the, the similarity is at the skin. You don't believe that? Look at your, look at your own brother or your sister and say, are we the same or are we different? Do we think the same? If you can't say that with your own relatives, how are you going to sit there and say that every white person thinks the same way you think? You can't do that. That it doesn't, it, it's just a lie for us to sit there and try to categorize. I know we, we want to do that because it makes convenience. People do these things so they can sit there and put people in boxes and buckets. You know, back in Europe, you just have a caste system. And the caste system said is that if you were uh, uh, a blacksmith, then you, you would be a blacksmith. Why? Because see, what people like to do is to put people in a box so that they can stay there, especially if that box put, uh, means that they're at a lower level than you, right? Because you could, be a, you could be a banker, right? So therefore, all your children will be bankers. But anybody was a blacksmith, anybody was a uh, repair cars, that's all they do. If they sell cars. That's all they do. We want their family, generation to generation, to be the same. That's what the world wants people to do. But you know, thank God, every last one of us have the ability to pursue prosperity, ability to be and, 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 and go as far as we can in life. That's the beauty of having, uh, being different. 
Just like the just like the fact is that God gave every last one of us the right to choose. God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He gave his only begotten son for that. But he gives us a choice. Every person has a choice to receive or not receive Jesus Christ. Every person has a choice. And if God gives them the choice, you must give them the choice as well. And you don't both say hate them if they choose not. But somewhere along the line, especially when we're talking about the Spanish, the, the Spanish Inquisition, that, that if you didn't think of a certain way, if somebody accused you a certain way, they will torture you. They tortured people just to prove whether they were a heretic or a believer. It's like so somewhere online, we, 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 we gravitated toward the evil to justify the good. See, God gave his life by sending his only begotten son for those of us to have a choice to receive salvation. <laughs> it was never about being forcing. You, you see what I'm saying? Somewhere somebody lied and said it was okay to go ahead and lie about uh, torturing somebody, hating somebody. And I'm just saying that maybe this is time now for all of us. This is not maybe, it is a time for us. Those who are ambassadors of Christ, that we need to get out of that 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 deception. We need to get out of that that uh, this mode of operation where we sit there and and do things the world's way. We lose our peace, we lose our love. You know, we do all those things because the world told us, somebody told you, somebody raised you, somebody told you in the church that it was okay to hate some people. Now, I'm gonna tell you something, that's not of God. So I said, let's go ahead and go through some scriptures. Sorry I talked so long. I said, I just wanna bring a point that, that we don't have time to listen to lies of the Lord. If you've got a man of God or a woman of God to tell you it's okay to hate somebody, if you got parents that are sitting there telling you it's okay, and if you are parents that are sitting there telling your children that every individual that has a certain amount of skin think the way and act the same way, that is not true. You know you need to stop lying, telling your child. Because they're not ignorant anymore. They're gonna find out information whether you lie to, you can lie to people, as long as you want, but you know what? You're gonna find out, they're gonna find, they're gonna learn the truth. It's just like we lie about Santa Claus and tell the child who's old enough is oh man, I thought Santa Claus was a real dog, don't it? And now they have seven things you lie. You lie like a rug. And that's not what God wants us to do. So, with that in mind, let's look at some scriptures. Obviously, because we bought the word, right? And, and we're gonna get in there. First of all, look at this. For those of you, who want to, to study the word, live in the word, be in the word, not being people, <laughs> you need to sit, look at the six things that God hates. These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are abominations to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed in some blood, a heart that vows in wicked imagination, feet to be swift and ready to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that saw a discord among the brethren. These are the things that God hates. So when somebody tells you or encourages you to do these things, you are in trouble because God, when you go before God, he's gonna sit there and say, when did I tell you to do these things? Now, I'm telling you, don't do the things, but I'm letting you know in my word that I hate these things. When did you get the permission to do the things that I hate? When did you get the permission to be have a proud look or a lying tongue or hand that shed in the blood? When? When did you when did I give you permission to devise wicked imagination and be swift to run into mischief? When? When it was again in 19, he, he down on that live thing, when did I tell you that it's okay to be a false witness and yet people do it? And you know, God said, I don't want you to do that, huh? 